Hey folks, Landstrider here, and welcome back to another episode of Diary of a Techno Wizard. I'm here on the Primus server, playing the unabridged mod pack, and today I'd like to get a little bit of building done, and then maybe if we have time, I'm going to get some warp. So let's uh, take a look at what I've been doing. First of all, I made this little tower, just pretty similar to, I, I used the same uh, schematic as I used to make the towers over on... Uh, uh, my wizard spire we got one of these guys it things makes a lot of uh, zombies so uh, i don't know if i mentioned this already but i switched up to a corn of fortune for my magnet so that i would be able to use a ring of shielding in this slot instead so now um i leave this in my inventory and it's a little bit easier to toggle off and on i can just uh toggle it off I can also use it in a manual mode where I just right click and hold and it'll pull things to me. It actually works at a pretty good distance when you use it in the manual mode. So uh, let's look at this thing. I decided I had one of these things really close to my base. One of these uh, Elder Achablisks, Awakened Elder Achablisk. In fact, uh, we'll look at that real quick. Uh, this one's not too far. Oh, where am I going? I'm lost. There's my base. Right there. And this right here was an awakened Eldritch obelisk. You can see that would have been really close. I could have made a path like right over to that. Wouldn't have been too difficult. Uh, and then it would have been um, uh, you know, over th across the mountains. But somebody had came by and um, broke one of these pieces. And if you break any of these pieces in one of these Awakened Eldritch, it, it explodes and destroys itself so that you can't use it anymore. I'm not 100% sure about the capstones, but I'm, I know if you break the altar or the obelisk, any of those pieces, if you try to break them, it will destroy it. So I uh, I rebuild it, or I mean, I, I found this other one. It's really close. Uh, since I can't use that one, it's gone. Uh, this one's actually pretty convenient because it's kind of close to spawn. It's uh, kind of almost the same distance from my base. It's a little bit further, maybe just a little bit. And if I want to, I can bring my path. Uh, this is my path that runs all the way out to my base. I can bring my path over this way, too, and maybe put a sign there at the Y in the road. It says uh, uh, evil, evil outland dimension this way and uh, white wizard spire the other direction <laughs> so uh, we could do that uh, but I wanted to make this a lot nicer as far as the outside appearance so I decided to use a bunch of cob uh, carpenters wedges to smooth out all of the uh, rough corners and I think that's gonna make it look really nice and I've been using this basalt and cracked basalt from blue power they're not like jet black. They're not like super black. So it actually, um, you can actually see some of the detail to them. And then I, uh, you know, like, da, da, da. oops, more. And I'll put a couple cracked ones in. And it gives a nice texture. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Fin I want to finish this up before I move on to my next building project. So let's just, I'll, uh, I guess I'll do a time lapse at this point. Um, when you're using these carpenter wedges, I'll, before I do that, before I start the time lapse, uh, mention about the carpenter wedges. If you shift and scroll your middle mouse wheel, you can select through all the various different carpenter wedges. So that's gonna that makes it a lot easier if you just put down the correct one in the first place instead of having to hammer it and wear out a hammer. And I'm going to put these little peaks on all the top here because I think that looks pretty neat. Gives it that super jaggedy castle feel, I guess.
All right, well, I think that'll do it for the most part. There's a couple more finishing touches I could probably do on the inside here. Yeah, in fact, yeah, I definitely want to uh, take out these top three right here like so and put in... I don't know if I want to use... Yeah, I, got, I really have to use the wedges at this point because uh, I don't think... Let me check something. If I use that... Well, not like that. If I use the stair... Actually, that will cover. That will cover it up. I'll use the stairs on the inside like that uh, to do this and that. That'll look okay on the inside, I think. Whoops. Didn't mean to do that. There's a couple little final touches, and then, whoops, I'm out of uh, carpenter stairs. Should have, yeah. Just need a few of those to finish this up. Whoops. Put that back. There we go. A little cramped in here because of the this is taking up quite a bit of space and all these uh, capstone things. But it doesn't need to be huge in here or anything like that. I haven't decided if I want to even put... Um, I forgot to take those ones out. Don't know if I even want to put uh, windows or bars or anything in the top there. I think... Um, maybe bars. I think that might look ominous. Or either that or some dungeon-style windows, maybe. What? Oh, because I have so many of them. Do that. I um, to fix those dirt spots here in a second. Now, I've got uh, some of these obsidian tiles left over from uh, raiding a few other these locations. Well, not these locations, but... Uh, the ones with the wisp honors and the treasure chests. I've collected a couple of those up. And if we look in here, I should have some more obsidian tiles. I do. Don't really want the totems. Um, let's see, I just need two. And then I can fix this uh, floor right over here. Ah, not what I want to do. <laughs> Whoops. Wrong focus. <laughs> uh, that was funny. Let's try this again. Nope, nope, like that, and that. There we go. Very good. Uh, I like it. And let's see, the last finishing touch would be the windows. Let me see what bars look like. I have plenty of bars. If that's like. I, you know, I was thinking of maybe something like a lighter. Yeah, I don't like that at all. It doesn't really... I mean, it's just, it's too much black. There's already enough black. If I do anything, I want to like maybe put some kind of uh, gold-trimmed glass or something in there. Let's uh, get some glass. What do I got? Ooh, I could put warded glass in it. That might not look bad. Let's, uh, let's see what that looks like. And the other glass I was maybe thinking about. Let's get some quite clear glass. In case I don't like the way this looks. Oh, my inventory is almost full. All right, let's try with this. See how this looks. Oh, no, I really like that. I really like that. I think that looks... That'll look good, pretty good around all around in those windows. Yeah, let's double, let's double check real quick if there isn't something else we can do with this. Uh, no, I don't really like any of that. And uh, maybe the Japanese glass, but uh, or the dungeon glass wouldn't look too bad. But I think we're gonna stick with the water glass. I think that'll provide a nice uh, bit of contrast to those windows. Yeah. Anyway, I'll come back and finish that later. Let's move on to the next uh, building project. So we need to get back to the base. We take the quick way. Oh, perfect. I was even facing the right direction. So you so you get to get a surprise as I turn around because I've been working up here. 
Uh, I'll move these guys over here and I'll wait for it. There it is. So I'm in nice white ceiling. These are the um, laboratory blocks. Makes a nice um, kind of a, almost a drywall look, except for the border edge thing, which I don't know. I really like it. Uh, we got a janitor closet over here, or I mean, well, still, uh, tile closet. I don't know what you would call it. Put some shelves in there to make it look nice. I might put something on them shelves just for a show. And then over here, we got the washing machine and a nice uh, cabinet with a bunch of drawers from DecoCraft. This is Mr. Crayfish Furniture Mod. This actually is functional, but I don't think it will function with like every armor type. I know it'll function with vanilla armor. What you can do is you put this soapy stuff in there. Soap mixture. Soap mixture. Yeah, right there. Soapy water, and you make super soapy water. That'll go in there. It'll fill up this tank, uh, fill up this internal buffer. You put your armor in there, and it'll actually remove the damage from vanilla armor. I don't know if it'll work with any other armor. But I thought it looked good. It's a good spot for it nice in the hallway right here. And then uh, I've put some sanitizing soap in there for when I go into the sauna. So right here we got a sauna. This is an actual functioning sauna. When I come in here, I get nice and uh, hot and steamy. Uh, thanks to the witching gadget, stomach sauna. And this will actually protect me from warp. And if we look in here, I've got warp ward. And if you use sanitizing soap on you when you have a warp ward which you know I got I got to actually take the soap in there and use it you actually can have a chance to remove some uh, temporary warp and stuff yeah I forgot to put a door here I need a door here uh, it'll probably be another door similar to that one uh, and in here we got a bathroom with all the all the fixings and plumbings trash can uh, wall cabinet I think I can put potions in there I'm not sure I tried to put the soap in there, but it didn't go. So I think it'll only accept potions. Uh, that is from Mr. Crayfish. Mr. Crayfish um, trash can. I think you can actually put stuff in here, and then it doesn't necessarily... It'll stay in there until you click empty, and then it'll delete everything in there. Kind of neat. It's a little bit different of a trash can than the other trash can in the pack that just basically instantly... It only has one slot and instantly deletes everything. Really cramped in here, but most bathrooms are relatively small. Body towel, some toilet paper for after you go to the toilet, the toilet tank. I wish you could actually flush this thing and made a noise or something. That would be super cool. The bathtub is actually Mr. Crayfish, but the shower head up there is DecoCraft. Now this one doesn't this one doesn't actually have a water animation, but the Mr. Crayfish one does, but I like the look of this one a lot better. Uh, some soap holder. The DecoCraft Sink, which actually does have an animation when you when you click it. And then we'll turn it back off. Oh, there we go. Pretty good. Uh, like I said, I need to put a door on that one still. And then out oh, here is going to be... Uh, I want to spruce this area up a little bit and make a living room and a kitchen. And, of course, this is the vault where my bedroom is where I actually sleep. So there we go. I did a little bit of decorating between this episode and last. I thought I'd show you. Uh, and this was super important right here. This was the main reason I wanted to get it all done is because I wanted that that um, sauna uh, in case I get too warped, which is uh, there's a good chance that that's going to happen here soon. Uh, let me come down here and put away everything. And if we look, I've actually put in the extra drawers that I talked about. I think I talked about this last episode. So these are all drawers and are all upgraded to emerald status with all kinds of stuff. I put in some more compacting drawers, moved my emeralds over here. Whoops. What's going on there? Mr. Piggy, are you not eating your cobble like you're supposed to? I bet. Let's put away all that stuff. So that should have put away a bunch of stuff into. Yeah, I need to turn off my coin when I'm up in here. Otherwise, I'll pull that cobble from below away from my uh, Mr. Piggy. Um, when you Yeah, occasionally he'll do this. He'll get stuck in the bar, and then he'll stop eating cobble like he's supposed to. Hey. So I got to keep an eye on that. I, I might need to switch the bars out for um, solid blocks of either glass or something like that. See, he wants to go get it, but he's stuck in the bars. So this is this is not a good thing. Or maybe it's the door. I don't know. 
So as soon as I opened the door, he was able to go grab the stuff. And he's fixed. It hasn't happened very often, but it's actually kind of cool that it happened on camera. So you can see that there, uh, that there is a little issue with him. Uh, if you're not careful, you got to keep an eye on him occasionally. He'll back up and he'll stack co cobble stack up there, which is not good. Not good at all. All right, let's put this stuff away. I'll sort that out later. I probably should not have put that uh, stuff straight in there like that. And that too. That can go away. Okay, so uh, put this stuff back in there. There we go. All right, the other thing I want to build today, like I said, before we get into doing too much, a lot of people are, come on, up, there we go. A lot of the folks are getting their, <clears throat> getting their uh, portals set up at their bases. So it's definitely going to be time for a server tour real soon, like maybe even next episode, if um, I ask around, make sure that nobody... Nobody doesn't have anything that they don't want seen. But I didn't want my portal actually inside the base. Now we're going to be using enhanced portals for that. And like I said, that I will probably actually put the portal in next episode. But here's what I want to do. Like right here, I want to make another one of these little towers. I'm going to make it just out of basic stone. But at the top, I want it to actually have some uh, retractable... Uh, walkways that would be able to like connect out to a airship because I know a lot of people are making like airship docks for their portal portal things I thought that would be super cool too uh, let's get that going actually it just uh, yeah we'll probably want this back on now this is actually gonna go very fast because I'm not gonna be switching out the materials Although I think I might do the uh, the smoothing of it with the uh, with the uh, carpenter's blocks, and I don't think I'm going to do it all on camera either, since I already showed you kind of the finishing touches on the last tower. I'll show you the beginning of the first of this tower. So I need lots of bricks. Let's see if I have any bricks in there already. No, I need these bricks too. Uh, so let's grab that. It's what's it? 77. Get all of those. And then the other thing I'll need is just a bunch of stone so I can convert it into bricks. And just get a whole bunch of that. That'll go into my inventory. And I'm going to need the three kinds of bricks that are in the schematic, which are regular stone bricks, mossy stone bricks, and cracked stone bricks. So I'm going to need a lot more stone and stone and maybe a little bit extra. I can't remember if it's more cracked or more mossy, but I think there's more cracked. All right, so what I'm going to use, I'm going to use my Schematica mod that I added. And I've got uh, my tower segment entrance. I want to start with that one. That's going to be the lowest level. Then I got to position it where I want it. It's going to be like uh, definitely not quite there. There, move it back. Maybe I move it back one more. No. There, I think that's the location I had in mind. And I'll extend it down, just kind of like bring it right down into the ground. Um, but this is the, the lowest level of the actual tower that you'll be able to, uh, to come, where you'll come out. Uh, and then I'm going to make a little path. A little one wide path over this way and connect it into there. For that, I'm going to need some shovels. I don't know if I have any sh shovels. I have this steel leaf shovel. I don't know if that would work. Let's find out. I know a vanilla shovel is what it usually takes. This is probably not going to work, but we're going to test it. Whoa. Well, I know it doesn't work on. Let me, let me clear the grass here. So I know it doesn't work if there's grass on top of the block that you're trying to change. There we go. All right, let's uh, let's let's test this now. If you right click, it does work. So this does function just like the vanilla shovel would. 
Then we'll do that. Um, just like that. Yeah, just like that. Good. This one regrew the grass. Whoops. Yeah, actually, I do want to come all the way up to there. And then over to there. Yeah, maybe that one too. There we go. Nice little path over to here. Perfect. That's probably actually going to be brick. We'll change that. There we go. All right, well, now I'm done with that. Uh, we'll just take it off the bar. Put this away for temporary. So now that I, I've got it where I want it, with my schematica, and I, I've even made my little path over to it. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the printer function, which is going to basically move these materials in and out of my hotbar and automatically place them for me very fast. So I don't, I'm not, this is not time lapsed. This is, this is me actually placing blocks. And as long as you're in the correct orientation, it'll, it'll place the stair blocks as well for you. Now, obviously, um, this is a really good way to get done, builds done really fast on survival mode, especially if you've gone into if you've gone into creative mode, gone into a creative world and made something that you really want, that you really like, and you want to build it, you want to represent it in your in your creative world or in your uh, survival world, and you just uh, do this. <laughs> You see this thing's all placing in very fast. I'm putting in all the stairs and everything. And I'm gonna I'm gonna change these stairs later, but I'm gonna go ahead and let it place it for now. Uh, and yeah, that's even orientated the right way, because I wanted it to come down and then you would come out this way. Because these are actually gonna get changed from doors into windows on the other sides here. Uh, is that everything? That's everything. So next I got to put the next uh, segment in and I probably shouldn't have bothered segmenting these out because I originally did that just so that I would be able to uh, to basically make a taller tower and I haven't done it yet so it was kind of pointless to segment it for me Okay, let me make sure that that's orientated right and then lines up. Everything's good. All I need to do is turn printer on. And there we go. It's going to print it out for me, basically. I'm going to put a bunch more detail to this later. I'm leaving this one brick. This one. Um, and in case you didn't recognize what this is, this is actually just a uh, the um, rogue dungeon uh, entrance tower uh, that I basically cleaned up a bit. Because when those generate, they generate with a bunch of cobblestone and they gen also generate with a bunch of uh, uh, gravel for some of the bits so I, I went into a creative world and found one and uh, removed all the gravel and cobblestone and put bricks back into those locations so it's not as run down as you would find a rogue dungeon thing so I'm gonna finish this up and uh, yeah I'll be back to show you the finished result of this in a little bit and show you the next thing I'm gonna be building to go with that then we're going to get a little warped. I want to make sure I save some time for that. All right, folks, I'm back. Let me go show you what I got done out here. There we go. There's my nice little tower. Arrival tower, basically, that's what this is going to be. Uh, I think I did a pretty good job of blending it down into the ground. It looks like it's built all the way down. And I, I put the only carpenter wedges I used. Oh, it's gonna do that, is it really? Come on, go away. I hate it when it does this. 
Yeah, it's the only problem about using um, Ender I.O. conduits in this pack is they, they really like to glitch out. Let's see if maybe putting a torch down up here will make a difference. Sometimes that makes a difference. Just a change in lighting. Nope. 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 It's being very stubborn. Oh, it's kind of a bummer. Uh, maybe change in this. No, 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 no. Nope. Oh, well, trust me, there's locks there. Oh, that, that annoys me because a second ago it was working fine. Oh, uh, yeah, there's blocks there. A conduit facade, anyway, with a uh, redstone conduit running through it. Redstone conduit. Um, that controls the drawbridges over here. It's got some different stuff. I'll show you how that works here in a second. Let's just take another look at it. The only carpenter blocks I use were on the little peaks right here. Just to give it a little bit of a touch. And then I went ahead and did my uh, windows all the way around with the... Uh, the half slab in the bottom so that they're like a block and a half tall. I think they look really good in a, in, for a castle window like that. It's big enough that you can really see out of it, but you can't go through it. You can't fall out of the window. Uh, I'm not 100% sure I like all the ones in the corners just yet, but I wanted to have extra windows on this level because this is a level, I think it's going to be the arrival level right there. I think when I do the enhanced portals and I want to make it look really really cool I was hoping to actually incorporate the enhanced portal into the structure so that you wouldn't necessarily even see it uh, or, or necessarily know that it's there other than you know you'll see the uh, dialing device somewhere uh, it's kind of a little cramped I, I opened this up as much as I could took out oh actually Take that block out. Yes, there we go. Open up a little bit more. Did it to the one corner. I forgot to do it to the other three corners. That's oops. That's why. That one back. There we go. A little more spacious now on this level. But I might have to um. Might have to uh incorporate it. I might have to one of these sides might actually get a little bit thicker because that's actually probably where the portal will end up being. Or I might have to close off the windows on two of the side windows on on this side. Like, uh, yeah, if I did that, it'd have a nice wide portal. Actually, it would be a three by three portal, which would actually work out pretty good. Yeah, I bet I could do that. And then maybe have the dialing device over here on the center column. Uh, of course, I need timers and things like that. I don't know. Maybe it'll go downstairs too. That way, if I uh, if I put it down here somewhere, like in, if I just took out these corners. Of course, then I gotta fix the ones on the outside. I don't know. Um, I'm not sure all what I can do with the enhanced portals because I've never used it before. I was I have a little bit of reservation about using it, but I've been watching other people's videos, seeing how they set up. It's really not too bad. Uh, the only thing that's gonna be a hassle is getting everybody's public code. So hopefully, we're gonna set up a uh, a Google Doc with everybody's code in it, so I don't gotta like try to chase them down. There, it's, it's showing the bricks now. <laughs> Don't know what that was. Maybe it was the time of day. <laughs> All right, well, let me show you this. Uh, the Airbridge dock. So I only got one side of this being a dock so far. But these guys right here are drawbridges. So that when an airship pulls up, we can do this. And then we can walk out to the airship. Now... What will happen? The, the, obviously, this is a lot longer of a of a bridge than I needed. Uh, but I wanted to do is is just put um, maximum amount of of material in there. They can go out 15 blocks, is what it amounts to. They go out 15 blocks, and the and the fence just kind of automatically took on that texture, and I kind of like it, so I left it. <laughs> I kind of like that texture. That's the texture of the actual drawbridge without a disguise in it. So if I like take that out, you can. You see that that's what the texture is. It auto textures to whatever blocks it's attached to. Kind of neat. I'm not sure if I think uh, Malleus Doors adds that function. I think. I might be wrong. Anyway, 
So there that is. Um, and the reason I had the extra blocks is basically so that you didn't have to be super precise when you're parking your uh, airship or whatever beside this. Uh, once, once, and then I might have to do something where I can make like a remote activation so that like if you're on the airship, you need a way to extend this bridge. What I was thinking of maybe doing was possibly switching this from a uh, from a lever to a toggle latch, and then having a button like on 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 one of these pillars on you know that you could shoot with an arrow from the from the ship. You could shoot that button with an arrow, and that'll press the button and extend the uh, the drawbridge, something like that. Um, glitchy, glitchy. Ugh, dang it. I was really hoping that wouldn't glitch out as much as it's glitching. So, oh well. Uh, yeah. Again, not sure if it's gonna the portal's gonna be on the top level of this or if it's gonna be on the bottom level, because I need to have some kind of a redstone timer to shut the portal down so that it doesn't continuously run and draw power, because that's gonna be vital. Okay, let's get warped. I think I got maybe a little bit of time left to get get a little bit of warped. So, I've got my sauna ready, and I've got the book I need. Go ahead and put this stuff away. And put all my extra tools away that I'm not using right now. It's almost time to make me a bound pick. Right there, obsidian. In fact, I probably should just do that. Just take a diamond pick. Or a di not. Not pick. I don't know what I'm not saying. I mean, a bound, um, a bound chisel, which is just take a diamond chisel and throw it in the binding ritual. Um, activation crystal. There it is. Take my activation crystal. I've been meaning to do this, and uh, my chisel is almost out of power, so this is a good time to do it as any. Just throw that in there. Put out the fire. Kinda wait for it to pop back out. It's gonna be really loud with thunder, lightning for a second. There it is. Now I got me bound chisel and uh, Unfortunately it only works when it's activated. And of course it does take a little bit of blood to keep it activated, but now it also has the same kind of modes as um, your diamond or your or your obsidian chisel. And it'll never run out of durability. In fact, actually, let's put it back to... I usually do panel. Usually. Uh, but then I just got to remember to deactivate it when I'm not using it. So that can go in there. And now I've got that. All right. I'll put my activation crystal back because I'm not using it. Not something I use very often. So I've actually got a Crimson Rites... C R I M. Now about C C R I M. Ugh. Typing in the dark. There we go. Crimson writes. There it is. This book is filled with strange symbols. Click it to study it. It doesn't really tell you anything else, does it? It doesn't warn you that you're about to get insanely warped. You have gamed warp. You have gamed permanent warp. Uh, I'm all warped up now. Get some uh, Thamanamkan. Get my, one of them out. And let's see what we got. Oh, we got a new the Crimson Cult. Uh, much of this book is written as spidery, unintelligible script. Boy, you understand, offers some strange insights to the goals of the Crimson Cult. Their origins are shrouded in mystery, but it seems their goals are the perfection of a ritual they refer to as. Aparis Oculus, opening the eye. What it does is unclear, but you doubt it's anything good. Interestingly enough, you think thaumaturgy might offer the missing pieces they have so long sought. Obviously, only a madman would pursue this line of study. I'm feeling kind of mad. So let's study this some more. Okay, did this open up something over here? It did. There we go. Opening the eye. More forbidden knowledge. I've gained warp, and I've gained permanent warp. Do I fail? I don't feel dirty enough to take my sauna just yet, I guess. We don't know. 
Now, there's a uh, device that I can actually make a sanity check. This might not be a bad thing to have, especially now that I'm starting to get extra warped. So let's get a thermometer, T H A U, thamo, mo. There we go, thermometer. We need another one of those. Uh, I think that went in the center. What was, what was the other thing? Diamond, uh, a mirrored glass, and a zombie brain. All right. Diamond, a mirrored glass. Mirrored glass is not too difficult. Oops. I uh, forget, you got to scroll over. There we go. Mirrored glass. And diamond and zombie brain. Diamond zombie brain. There we go. Uh, hopefully I've got all the the other stuff for this already. I hope. Well, let's find out. Uh, alienus, cognito, and census. All right, let's check that. Alienus, definitely. Cognito, definitely. Census. Ooh, I don't got enough census. That's easy to solve. Some bone. Bone meal. Because basically every die has census. It doesn't matter what color. Bone meal I have. I can make tons and tons and tons of. Uh, just because I get so many bones from grinding mobs. Uh, not necessarily mobs here at the base, but like if I go get... Uh, if I go get heads, what are they, the heads for, uh, wither heads, yeah, I end up coming back with several stacks of bone. And if I want to get even more bone meal for my bone, I can throw it in my sag mill and get lots and lots of bone meal, so that's probably the best one for me to use for census. Okay, let's see how much we got so far, 35, that should be good. I always like to take my, uh, my cap off whenever I activate this, just so I don't accidentally do something that I didn't intend to do. Uh, I probably could have checked this, but I'm pretty sure that we're good on uh, stability. Yeah. Plenty good. Now that last message, pedestal, blah, 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 blah should have an item to match. If, a, if, a, if an infusion requires an odd number of items, there's no way to can make it completely balanced. It's just how it is. So infusions that use odd numbers of items inherently have a little bit more instability than ones that use even number of items. There we go. We've got a sanity check. Sanity check. How does it work? What do I do with it? I guess I, 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 guess I need to read. Uh, you have become... It's probably best that you have a look inside yourself, make sure everything's still right. The tool will allow you to check the effects of warp on your psyche and how much. Of course, you cannot allow the tool like this to fall into the hands of your enemies. So you've taken great pains to obf obfuscate. Ob ob yeah. Uh, to hide the information it provides. You might have gone too far, though. You're having a hard time deciphering it yourself. Okay, so how does it provide it? How does it provide anything? Do I got to put it on my... Wand? Do I do I have to, to put it on a wall somewhere? I don't know. Do I put it there? Where is it? How does it work? <laughs> don't really say how to how to actually activate it. Um I'm right clicking, I'm left clicking, right clicking, I'm shift right clicking, I'm shift left no, there's nothing working. I don't know. Uh, I thought that this would be relatively easy. Sanity check. Put it on the wall. No, I don't know. How do how do I get it to work? Uh, magic mirror or something? I don't I don't even know. Doesn't exactly say, does it? You've taken great pains to obf I've ob obviously I've obfuscated it too much, and I don't know how to make it work. Okay, well, we'll just move on and uh, hope that we don't have to deal with too many uh, warp effects in the short term. But I was I was hoping that when I uh, when I read that right, it would open these things up right here. It didn't. Okay, I think I actually have to make the eye. 
So I need a void seed, an eye of ender, and a gold ingot. Well, I should have some void seeds in here. I have a couple. I just need to save two. Um, I actually need to make four of these things. If, I'm, if I understand things correctly. Which um, isn't always the case. <laughs> Gold ingots. Three, four. And then eyes of ender. Eyes of ender. One, two, three, four. I don't need four of these because I think that's what it takes to open the actual portal. Uh, then I need oh, a lot of alienists, uh, some tenebra, vacuo, some eider. Lots of alienists. That's a lot of alienists. I don't have that much. So let's get some uh, ender pearls. Get a couple stacks of those. I'm going to need that. Probably that has most everything I need except for the Vacos. Yeah. It has the uh, Alienist and it has the Eider. What was the other two things? Tenebra and Vacos. Tenebra I can actually get from Endstone? Yes. That'll work. Um get two stacks of that. Well, we're going to need a bunch of that in the future. And Vacos, I usually break down chests. Get some chests. Just take all those. And that's nice because it also gives me uh, stuff that I use in converting metals and things as well, too. So, Alright, that's going to take a little while to cook. What else? Let's let's look through and see if unlocking that unlocked anything else that we can get to now on any of these tabs that we didn't necessarily know about before. No, nothing new here that I can see anyway. Alchemy. I still haven't unlocked these two things: bottled taint and liquid death. Both of those are going to warp me a little bit. Um, I guess. It's not that major of a deal at this point since I got the sauna and the sanitizing soap ready to go, just in case. Uh, I haven't got around to making the the fortress armor yet. Uh, flux scrubber, that's like a cleans up the area. I did get banners open. That's kind of some, that's something I uh, forgot to mention. So yeah, I was uh. I was I was bummed because originally when I when I scanned a one of these guys over here I scanned one of these guys Crimson Cult Banner and that's supposed to give you the knowledge of how to make these banners but apparently I scanned the banner before I had the prerequirements in order to open this so I actually had to get the banners by doing research notes so I do actually do end up doing a few research notes so like if I get my forbidden or my research notes a S re re. Do I, do I have some fragments? Knowledge fragments. Sorry. Can O W knowledge fragments. See, actually, I have a couple in here. Soul sieve, which I haven't done. Liquid death, haven't done yet. But what I can do is I can make this research note of unknown knowledge with knowledge fragments. And if I uh, right click this. It'll give me a note about something that I don't already know. Well, the problem is I already actually have a liquid death in here. And the reason it gave me the liquid death is because I haven't actually learned it yet. So let's just let's clear these up so that it doesn't give it to me again. Liquid death. Yeah, I'm going to get a little bit warped. And um, all right, I can't take the bottle tanks. I need some some research stuff. Research points, I need these. One, two, three, I think five total it was. There we go, bottled taint. So it shouldn't give me those ones again. Shouldn't offer those to me when I try to make a um, unknown research note. Anything else that I can select or that I need to select so that it doesn't give me the notes for? Uh, did that open anything up over here? Nope. Nothing new. 
Not under automatic. I had some stuff that was locked over here before. Nope, still locked. Still locked. Still locked. I have no day no idea what what is gonna unlock those just yet. But I have imagine I imagine it's hidden knowledge. Uh Euclid Daisy. I don't really need that. I don't think it would give me any of these. I don't know. I don't really want to take all of these. That's a lot of warp to have all at one time. Uh, I did learn Wrath Cage. So that allowed me to make my own spawners, basically. I don't think there's going to be anything here. Yeah. Nothing to get warped about bees. Ooh. I've got something new here. This is new. Taint, tainted Swarm. Uh, warning may leave a sticky residue. That's a dangerous, um, dangerous level. I'm not going to do that one just yet. <laughs> I'll hold off on that. This still isn't unlocked. Interesting. I thought that that one had unlocked as well. Thomic disassembler. I don't. Know. I didn't make this on camera, but I did make one. It's kind of it's kind of neat. It acts just like a um, an atomic disassembler, but it's thomic, so it doesn't take damage. Doesn't use any charge. And the recipe is Thomium with Void Weapons. So it takes all um it takes a void axe, a void pickaxe, a void shovel, and a void sword around a thomic alloy. The thomic alloy is made with void metal, thomium, and diamond. And I just made it because it's cool. Cool looking. I don't really use it because my Tinker's weapons are like really good and in fact i probably should start using this like when i don't want to break things like real fast so it also has modes like it has slow fast off and normal like a regular disassembler but it doesn't have the vein mode which is sad because that's like my favorite part of the disassembler but yeah i should start using this when i want to not break blocks super fast uh, but i keep it in here so yeah i gotta remember that i have it and start using that when I don't want to like overkill on the blocks because I oh, it's so, so often I break too many blocks when I go to use the Sendarian pick because the speed of 53 is insane. It's insane. Oh, yeah, I wanted to ask you guys which one of these symbols do you like the best? I kind of like the purple banners. Unfortunately, the, the, the Tenebra, I really like the Tenebra symbol, but it doesn't show up very well on the purple banner. And I really like this symbol a lot. And I thought this one would also necess would also represent me pretty well. So out of those four, um, one, two, or three, or four, which one do you guys think I should put around the base? I was going to use them in different places for decorations and stuff. And they're kind of um, well, they're kind of expensive because you got to use up eight, you got to use up a file, a, a file, and you know eight of your your uh, essence in order to put it on there. I don't know. I, anyway, which one do you guys like the most? Or which one do you think would look the best around my place? If I stick with purple, or do you think I should go with a different color? Or should I use red? And then that way it matches the crimson stuff. I don't know. I'd also change these over to purple because I like purple. Anyway, um, I should definitely have the stuff here now, don't I? Put my gold on this side. Put my void seeds over here. What was it? Eyes of Ender goes in the middle, right? Is that what it was? Yeah. Which I had up here. But I forgot to get some. Eyes of Ender. One, two, three, four. Either that or I accidentally put them away and didn't realize it. Is that right? Am I doing this right? Let me double check. <laughs> uh, back over here. This thing. Yeah, Eyes of Ender. Gold, Void Seed. Alright, we're good. We're good. Uh, and go. Um, hopefully I've got... This probably is still working, isn't it? It is. But it's got, it's gone through all the end stones. It's, it's now working on my other stuff. So, Vakos. We should be good. We should be good. At least for a couple of them. What, what's the other stuff I need? I needed like tons of alienists. All right, I got it. I got it. I had 256 to start, and I definitely had more than that when it started. So we're good. Uh, sort of keep an eye on that, but 
I want to keep looking through here. So yeah, there's some a couple things opened up, or one thing opened up in the Tainted Magic when I read the book. Uh, I don't think I think I pretty much have everything under Thomic Energistics unlocked. So nothing there. I need to learn this. Forbidden knowledge, moderate. Let's do it. Ooh, inspiration. Gone but not forgotten. Not sure what that one might be about. Let's see what this does. Uh, the thick sand you've discovered uh, provides a disturbing substance. The screaming faces which writhe beneath the surface are no mere illusions. Studies have detected that minuscule amounts of remnants of innumerable shattered souls, human, animal, and otherwise. You are close to uncovering the soul sand's origins, but one, but one use for the substance has presented itself. By constructing an elaborate combination elaborate combination sieve and dream catcher, you can separate the physical sand from the soul fragments it holds. It's also have dropped sand below itself and in into an inventory if possible, while the liberated souls ascend skyward. If a brain in the jar is placed directly above the sieve, it will consume the soul fragments and convert it into experience parts. Oh, okay, okay. That's not what I thought that was going to do. So it basically it converts soul sand into experience and gives you the sand back. Neat. Whoa. I was apparently had auto run or something there for a second. Let's, uh, let's get on with this. I want to open his portal. Probably already gone long. I'm actually sure that we've already gone long. So yeah, I don't, I don't think, I don't think, I think I need to show these next two infusions. All right, I'll be back after I've infused all these. All right, all right. Well, while I'm waiting, while I'm waiting for this last uh, two. I probably should go ahead and try one more of these research notes. See if I can get something brand new. What's this? Collar of Pain. That's new. Wait, is it? Is that something I can actually just click to study? Let's check it out over here. Collar of Pain. I don't see it on the list. I don't see it over here anywhere. So, oh, okay, this must be new. Uh, and a while back, I did actually have somebody request that I do one of these on camera. So, here we go. Um, let's get this thing going. Get the last one going. That's oh, they don't stack. That's number three. I need one more. Get that one going while I do this research. Uh, so corpus, uh, which is flesh. Okay, what's this one? That is. Hmm. So corpus death. This guy right here is also going to have this stuff. Perdido, which is going to allow me to connect to that. All right, good. Then I go Perdido. Uh, this has Perdido in it, and then Perdido out this way. Oop! 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 Um, blurry vision. That's a bad effect. That's one of the effects of, of warp. Um, no, no. I need something that has Perdido in it. There we go. That'll work. Uh, this thing down here. What is that? That is Famos and Corpus. We could. This is magic. So we go magic. Uh, Vacos. And then to that. And this was Famos and Corpus. Corpus can do that. Plus death. We'll connect to that. And then we'll do one more. That's not the most efficient way, but there we go. I got it done. Now that that's done, I can discover a new knowledge. Let's uh, let's see. Ooh, yeah, collar of pain. Sometimes people just want to get hurt. 
<laughs> especially if there's a benefit. The Collar of Pain has the capabilities of an amulet of Viz storage with the added bonus that it will generate Viz whenever you take damage. The more you get hurt, the more Viz it generates. Oh, neat. And it has a 250 per capacity, just like my Viz storage, but I need less shards. And I don't know how to get less shards. I haven't gotten any yet. So I'll have to look into what I need to do to get less shards. Let's grab our last eye here. But there we go. There's a new unknown knowledge that I got using uh, fragments and uh, research, the traditional research. So let's go over to the to the location. Ooh, I don't know if I want to do it at night because there'll be zombies over there. Yeah, let me let me sleep off this uh, nighttime real quick. And I probably should put some kind of easy teleportation from my base over to there later. But I will uh, figure out what I want to do for that. I don't really want to have a lot of those enhanced portals. I just want to have it as the main... Um, when somebody comes from another base or from another area, they'll come in to the enhanced portal that'll be in that tower over there, that arrival tower. Otherwise, I want to use other different types of magic teleportation and such. Train not loading. That's okay. We're almost there. There it is. There's our black tower. I I haven't I haven't put the glass in yet, but that's okay. If I put this in, I think it's gonna be so that goes there. I just gotta put all four of them on it. That should do something, right? Yeah. No. I thought that that's all I had to do. Actually, let's just take that. Maybe I whack it with my wand. Oh, yeah. Oh, there it is. The portal to the Outlands. We're not going there today. We're going to end it right here. And then uh, we'll get ready. Ooh, it makes some really cool noises. Oh, that is awesome. Uh, and apparently there's Endermen spawning in the area now. So what it did is it actually converted the node that was there into that portal. That's really cool. So yeah, we're going to go to the Outlands next episode. Tune in next time to see if we can survive in the Outlands. I, got, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. If you did, be sure to leave a like, comment, a thumbs up. And until next time, I will catch you later.